Hello there everybody and welcome back to another stock analysis video. Today we are going to be actually doing our first utility company, Duke Energy, mainly because of the fact that their earnings are actually coming out tomorrow, Monday, before open. So let's put out this video today and see where we actually might want to buy this company at. So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. We're going to start off with the dividend summary. Duke does actually pay a dividend, which is actually really, really good. Utility companies are actually one of the most defensive companies out there because, let's face it, everybody needs electricity, everybody needs water, etc., etc., etc. And it's actually interesting. These types of companies are the only ones that are allowed to monopolize by federal regulation. So it's actually fairly interesting. But nonetheless, dividend payment, guys, of 3.54%, which ends up being 99 cents per share for an annual payout of $3.94, not too shabby. Payout ratio is 74.57%. And I really can't say whether this is good or bad because I have never analyzed a utility company before. Maybe when we do a couple more here and there, we might actually be able to see whether or not the payout ratio this high might be actually good, right? Just because the payout ratio is this high doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad thing. For example, REITs have a naturally high payout ratio because they are forced to give out 90% of their revenue in the form of dividends. So you would expect a REIT to be like 100 plus percent. I don't necessarily know if utilities have the same kind of status when it comes to their payout ratio. Five-year growth rate on this dividend is only 2.95%, which is fairly low. However, their dividend growth has been 11 consecutive years, which is really, really solid. Ex-dividend day is actually coming up as of the 12th of May. Payout date is on June 16th, and they pay their dividends quarterly. Now let's come over here to the book value spreadsheet. We can't use discounted free cash flow guys for utilities because unfortunately they do not have capital expenditures. So we have to use something called book value and tangible book value and then see the price to the book value and tangible book value ratio, which we're going to do that in just one second. But nonetheless, ticker symbol of DUK market cap of $85.7 billion, PE guys of 22.56. So this is pretty much just telling me that it is a little bit expensive at 111 Eleven dollars and thirty-two cents. This is slightly expensive. However, however, let's take a look at other metrics just to see what we can come up with. Because even if it's expensive by a little bit, it's only expensive by two point five six points. So we may actually be willing to pay a premium in regards to what we're actually getting from this company. Now, with the annual dividend of three dollars and ninety-four cents, this comes out to be three billion dollars being paid out every single year. Coming now to the fundamentals, starting with a net income five years ago of $3.1 billion to today, guys, of $4 billion. That is an increase of 28%, which is awesome. Now, the big, big, big elephant in the room is two years ago, they went down to $1.4 billion from the three years ago of $3.7 billion. Well, what happened two years ago, right? The demand for energy pretty much just went down. A lot of companies that were having offices no longer needed their office space because everybody was just staying at home, right? So this probably could explain the situation. Essentially, it is a COVID-related number. You can ignore it. It's an outlier. Nonetheless, this is still a 28% increase when it comes to the net income. Coming out to the total revenue five years ago of $23.2 billion to today of $24.7 billion. Increase of only 6%. And yeah, that's not really that impressive. And as you can see, five, four, and three years ago, consistently going up two years ago because of COVID, it went slightly down and then it just slowly recovered the previous year to today. So it's not as bad as you guys think. And the way that I see it is, yeah, it's only 6%. However, seeing that Duke is such a huge corporation, at least I think it's a huge corporation. I think it's like one of the biggest utility companies out there. For them to actually keep growing their revenue at a high, high rate, very, very unlikely because, well, they're already massively big. So the, the market share is already pretty much topped. So 6%, fairly good. I would like them to get up to the point that they actually, never mind, they actually did surpass their three years ago number, which was $24.658 billion. So yeah, they, they're actually doing better than three years ago, which is really, really good. Now coming to the metric that a lot of companies tend to fail, and this is the shares outstanding. This one, guys, tells you whether or not the company is diluting you as the investor, okay? You want this number to be coming down and not up. So you can see right here, well, Duke is actually doing a fairly bad job at this. Five years ago of 700 million shares to today of 769 million shares. On the five-year, guys, this is an increase of almost 10%. 
However, though, to their credit, they did increase it from three years ago of 733 million shares to two years ago of 769 million shares. However, two years ago to one year ago to today, they have kept it the same at 0%. So they may actually be buying back shares or at least keeping it the same within the next couple years. We don't really know. But nonetheless, on the five year, this is an increase of around 10%. It's diluting you really really bad metric now let's analyze the total assets minus the total liabilities if they were to liquidate all of their assets how much money would they have left to cover their liabilities and would they be even able to cover their liabilities right so you can see right here it's actually doing fairly fairly good currently they have around 51 billion dollars in assets minus liabilities which is above water which is really really solid and not just that with the past five years they have increased their total assets minus total liabilities which is again a really really good solid metric average total assets guys is around 157.3 billion dollars average total liabilities is around almost 110 billion dollars average assets minus the average liabilities we get around 47.5 a billion dollars now let's take a look at the way that we actually see whether or not this company is actually worth buying today or not. And that's looking at the book value per share. What the book value is, guys, it is essentially all of their tangible assets and all of their non-tangible assets that they have on their books. And then you divide this by the number of shares, and then this is essentially how you come up with this number. So this is actually looking fairly good. An increase of 3% with a current book value per share of $61.55, up from the prior five years of $59.63, which is really, really solid. Now looking at the tangible book value per share, this is very, very similar to the book value. However, it takes away anything that is non-tangible, the goodwill, the patents, etc., 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 and only takes into account all the tangible stuff. This one is significantly way more I guess accurate than that of the book value and this one tells you in a more accurate sense what price you should be buying this company at. So as we can see right here five years ago of $31.59 to today guys of $36.06 an increase of 14% within the past five years which is getting really really good. But just looking at those book values doesn't really tell us anything. Now what we're going to do is see what the valuations actually tells us. We're going to take a look at the price divided by the current book value. And this gives us 1.81. Now let's take a look at the price divided by the current tangible book value. And this gives us 3.09. Essentially, you want these two ratios to be as closest to one as possible. Because this is essentially telling you how many times this company is trading above or below what it should be. Anything about 1.00, it is essentially overvalued. Anything under one, it is essentially undervalued. So you can see right here, when it comes to their book value, they are up a significant amount by 1.81. And when it comes to their tangible book value, this ratio even comes up even higher to 3.09. So as it stands, this is fairly, fairly expensive just based off of the book values. However, just because this is essentially telling me that this right now isn't a pretty good buy, doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't buy it, right? At the end of the day, guys, these are just my assumptions, and this is not financial advice, right? I'm just giving you guys another way to look at how to value a company just so that way you don't overpay for something. The more you overpay for something today, the less returns you're going to have in the future, right? And I even put a video a couple days ago saying valuations don't matter until they do. And what I was trying to convey in that video, by the way, you guys should check it out, is that even though right now companies are being hyped and that you may think things are different this time because of technology and innovation, doesn't necessarily mean that you will be able to make a return if you overpay for growth that's essentially why i have this book value calculator and my discounted free cash flow calculator available for free and all of you guys can have it i also have a dividend tracker as well it's in my calculators playlist there's a link in the description in i think most of those videos that links you to the spreadsheet where you can actually go and make a copy of it and you guys can have it for yourself again none of this is financial advice just showing you guys a different way to look at companies and to evaluate them a different way just so that way you stand from the crowd does that mean that you're going to say no to a lot of them probably but that will actually save you from having a lot of losses again on Thursday, when the market fell around 5%, my portfolio only went down 1.5%. So 
you know, I'm still losing money, but because I buy companies when they reach my valuation standpoint, my valuation price target, I lose less when the market entirely falls. So that's just one way to look at it, guys. I'm just trying to help you just so that way you don't overpay for a company. Now let's take a look at the dividends at the current share price. Let's say that you make the average US income $68,703 and you want to put in one month's income into this company at $3.94. This would actually buy you 51.43 shares and at the current dividend this would actually get you an annual dividend of $202.64 which is actually really really good. Now, a quarterly dividend, it actually ends up being around $50.66 and a monthly dividend of $16.89. So as it stands, this actually might be pretty good. However, as you guys see here, this is fairly overpriced. If this company falls a little bit more, you might actually be getting a lot more dividends for your $5,725. All in all, guys, Duke Energy is a company that I actually considered putting into my portfolio. However, I looked at their valuation. And I was just like, ah, I just don't like it. That Those shares outstanding really just does it for me, right? And on top of that, $111, yeah, with a current book value of like 36 or so, I just don't think it's that reasonable to buy a major corporation, a major utility corporation that is this expensive. My personal opinion, I suggest you wait for it to drop a little bit more. But then again, that's just my opinion. You do whatever you guys want with your money. That pretty much does it for this video. Like the video, like, comment, subscribe. Really all I'm asking for, guys. I'm giving out this free calculator, the discounted free cash flow calculator, and a dividend tracker. All I'm asking for is help me grow my channel. You guys can follow me on my new tech sites as well. And I also have a Let's Play channel. All of that, link in the description. So if you want to see that, you can follow me there. With that said, peace out. And be on the lookout for the next stock analysis of video.